Hello. Uh, hi, Manish. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Okay, that's good. You can introduce about yourself. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Yogit. Uh, currently, I'm working with a quality girl, which is a software testing company uh, in SDI client. And before that, I was working with HTM Technology, which is also a software testing uh, company. And like complete three years of experience, banking domain as a manual tester. But yes, currently I am preparing myself as an automation tester also. And I am basically API. So to get more of it. Okay, okay. And where do you live in India? Uh, I live in Navi Mumbai. Where? Uh, Navi Mumbai. Navi Mumbai, okay, that's great. Okay. So you have three years of experience into manual testing and you're planning to move to automation, is it? Yes, yes, I have three years of experience. Okay, that's great. So you have prepared yourself uh, automation? Uh, yes, I have prepared from last two months, I'm trying to develop my So I Okay. So can I ask questions to you from your resume, whatever you have mentioned, can I ask that? Yes, yes, you can ask. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, So you're comfortable for this video to go live on our YouTube channel? Yes, yes, I'm comfortable. Okay, okay, that's great. So I want to know, like, if you can talk something about your skills or whatever you have learned. And uh, since you are presenting yourself here now, I want to know what all skills do you have? Uh, basically, I have a manual testing skill, which is I was working from last three years and. Like a lot of things I learned uh, from that, like special designing, like agile processes, process, and like uh, what is in banking domain. Basically, like uh, most of the things in banking domain, I think the exception system. So I learned a lot of things in banking domain, as well as this year, because what is what is happening in front end, and uh, we need to validate on a back end also. And, but yes, after some time, I thought uh, okay, manual testing is fun. Okay, I am strong in that. But now I need to move to automation also. So I learned a core Java and Selenium. Okay, that's great. How strong you are in core Java? Uh, if out of five, I will rate myself as a 2.5, little bit less confident. But yes, I can. 2.5, you said out of five? Uh, out of five. 2.5, you said? Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I will be asking you questions only from your uh, resume and nowhere else. Your resume is right next to me in mobile. Yes, and, uh, I want you to take this interview as a happy moment for you. I don't want you to like get sad if in case you're not performing well from this interview. I want your happiness to be at the same level how it is there today, how it is there at this moment. Please uh, don't ruin your weekend. I know it's Friday. 10.45 p.m. I know it's late for all of us, both of us. Uh, so if you know the answer, please let me know. If you don't know the answer, you can let me know to skip the question. I can skip that, nothing to worry. Okay. And one thing I just want to tell you that just because you have come to this interview, no matter how you will prepare, how you will give your interview, if you're giving best, it is good for you. If you're giving your worst interview, I'm just telling what is a max okay. that can happen. If you're giving your worst interview also, I'm just taking the what maximum can happen. If you're okay. giving the, like not up to your mark, you are going to learn a lot of things from this interview. And that will really motivate you to do better in your future upcoming interviews. Yes, I want to. In case you are really performing, let's say you are performing very well. It is really good for you. In case, in case you're not performing well, it is really good for you. This interview is going to really motivate you to get a job. And I'm really much, uh, I'm very, very frankly telling it to you. If you're really working hard to search your new job, as you said, you are, you are doing it. From after this interview, after this interview, believe me, after 45 days, you will be having an offer letter. I'm not saying that, you will tell me. Yes. I know I... this video is live on the YouTube channel. Just comment on the comment section to show it to people that I am, and I got a job after this interview. And I'm going to pin your comment at the top so that everyone will get to know that this guy gave interview and he's, he's selected. The reason I'm able to tell this with so much of confidence is because I have seen this. 
And uh, if you look back to my any interview that I have done with the previous people, those who were trying to search a job, but they were not getting that confidence to attend the interview. After taking my interview, they have got a job. Don't go by my words, just go to the yeah. comment section and check it out. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay, guys, uh, let's proceed. I want to know how do you create a static method and a non static method? Can you just tell me a little bit? Can you give me some idea about it? Uh, static method, uh, when we create the static method, there is a static keyword is used, like public static word, it is a static method, like main method is static. If particular method is non static, it is like public or void, and uh, we will write the test, public void test, it is a method. Okay. And if it is a static, public static uh, word test, public void static. Uh, Okay, so you mean uh, your voice is little breaking or it is not that clear? Okay, I will try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Means, uh, like static is the keyword we can use, then it will be a static method. If it is not, then it is non static. Got it, got it. So you're telling if you use the word static, it is static method. If it you is. use the word static, it is non static. Yes, got, yes. got it. Let's say I need to call it in the main method. How will you call it? I'm starting from the basic question. Uh, okay. And then I will increase my level of questions. Okay. If uh, in order to call this non-static method, we need to create the object. And by using the preference variable, like a, a1 equals to new a, by a1, we can call that. Uh, if it is a uh, static method, then we can call by the class name, the, as it is loaded in the class name. Uh, okay. You, you mean if it is a static method, you will just call with using its method name. Is it so what you say? Yes, yes, class name. If, if, it it is, is, if it is a non-static method, then? Uh, it is, uh, we need to use reference variable at the time of object creation. Got it, got it, got it, got it. And can you also tell me how will you call the constructor? Can you talk something uh, about it? Yes, yes. Uh, for constructor, uh, it is not necessary to uh, call the, as soon as the object is created, the okay. constructor will be called. Got it. Understood. Understood. Now tell me one more thing. Can you have parameterized and non-parameterized static methods? Uh, no. Till the time I don't know whether it is because I know the constructor is a parameterized, but method is not a parameterized. Yes, I never use that. No, 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 no. I got your point. What you are telling. I got your point. What you are telling. But whatever you're telling is, is a wrong thing. But don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I got it. I got it. See, any method you have, right? It can be yeah. either parameterized or non-parameterized. You, mm -hmm. you, you want to give me an example of what is parameterized? Uh, like uh, data type, it is, a, for example, particular we are sending the data type. It is a parameter type and uh, the number can of... Can you give me an example, syntax of it? Uh, syntax of like, uh, for example, we are creating object uh, A, A1 equals to UA. And in that we are sending in data for in, in that time we will uh, like tell that it is a parameter. Right? And uh, for method, I don't know really. Okay. Let's say you have one method called as a void uh, void India. Let's say you have a method called as void India, or let's say void Bangalore if you have a method. If you just have a method called as void uh, India or Bangalore. It is going to be non-parameterized, okay. non-parameterized, non-static method. Am I correct? Okay. Non-static. Okay. Yeah. If I use void Bangalore in the parameter, if I pass integer a or integer b or in or double a, are you are you getting now what I'm doing? Yes, yes, I'm getting. Now that is called as parameterized. Okay. So coming to your methods, it can be either parameterized or non-parameterized. Non-parameterized. Your constructor can be either parameterized. Parameterized, non-parameterized. Got it. Uh, so let me ask you this next question. Shall I show you one program? You will be able to tell the output of it? Uh, yes. yes you can. Okay. It is going to be the easy one, not from the hardest topic that we have in Java. From the basic one, in case you are able to answer, please answer. In case not, not a problem. Let me just open that for you. You had your dinner? Yeah, uh, no, after this interview. Oh, that's that will be too late for you. I I guess you stay alone, right? Uh, no, I stay with my family. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. 
that's great so let me just share my screen can you see my screen uh yes yeah. can you can you take your time i don't want you to answer me in hurry take your time and just tell me the output of this program i just want you to tell me the output in case there is a output in case there is no output tell the output is going to be nothing take your time and just please tell me the output uh no system will fail i am not going to insert error because a is greater than uh, a is 1 and uh, it is showing that 1 is affording uh, greater than 1 so it will not go inside the program so you just, you just tell me the final output of this program no so i am not going to inside this block set This is. You are telling this will be your output. Ah uh, yes, this will be my output. Shall I run it? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Sir. Just, just take your again, again time. Take your again time and tell me why you got this. Okay, for that and. uh logical operator it is going to that means like that because of this and operator it is going to inside the block no not because of and do you know what is this oh sorry uh i got it it is if false okay what is this operator called as oh, uh it will uh, like convert to to false called as any idea i don't know the complete hmm, not operator not operator okay you 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 got, got it why you got this i uh, yes yes i got it was, i don't see for that in this line number 9 in your own language if you can tell me something more about it why uh, the output is this why not something else can you tell uh, me actually uh, first i saw this uh, it is like a is less than 4 but a is 1 but uh, due to this not operator it is going inside that it is a true but it is converting it is a false and it is going inside the block i want to tell to you something and i am sure this will really help to everyone who is watching this video who will be watching this video that always don't give answers in hurry because this is learning for you right so yes sir what you have learned from this session is you should take your time and answer because see answer fast and uh, telling them this is answer is not such a great thing okay taking time and answering answering correctly is the greater thing now you got to know that oh okay not is also there if it was an interview it was not <laughs> probably they would have not proceeded with you ahead nothing to worry i am just giving you such motiv motivation okay you can go ahead you can go ahead yes yeah. due to the not operator it is going to okay got it got it see uh, so this is not true because a is not greater than 4 you got it right yes yes it is not than if in and operator if one is false and another one is true your answer is going to be false yes not just because you have not your answer is going to be true that means it will go inside the if block of statement now what will it is doing it will print and then you know after this is done this will be printed is this clear to you yes yes it is clear can you proceed yes sir. shall i give you another program one simple program shall i give you yes 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 okay 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 let me share one simple one for you can you try this I want you to take time and tell me the output. okay uh before before asking this question i just want to tell you that you have worked on for while loop just asking uh 
Uh, yes, not that much, but yes, I am for. Like in while loop, there is not that much and <laughs> small much. <laughs> yeah, I was using for loop most of the time. Yes, while loop little bit much. Okay. okay. But if you want to try, you can try. If not, we can skip the question. Nothing to worry. Yes, means uh, for first eight time, it will be go to the inside the block, and then the my first, first salary will be twenty. Then it will vary. And then uh, the I will be started like it is a decrement. I is decrement. It will decrement. Say uh, and once it will reach to the eleven, it will be stop. So it will run how many times? This will get print right. You said me this will get printed. I got it. But how many times? Uh, for nine times. Uh, It should be fine. Nine times, right? Nine times. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. You you got to know why? Uh, I think it is printed twenty times. Four. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to explain why? No, I understood that like uh, due to this while loop, it is executing in the same way. Okay, that's that's great. That's great. That's great. Wonderful. Uh, I want to understand something from inheritance class, inheritance topic. Yes. If you can tell me why multiple inheritance is not possible, or if it is possible. Where it is possible? How it is possible? Uh, multiple inheritance is actually possible because, but it is like from one class to another, and the another to another. So in such a way, uh, I am doing that. Uh, the multiple inheritance uh, in same class, it will be like extend and implement. We can use that keyword together. And such a can you first talk about uh, how why? Why multiple inheritance is not possible using classes? Can you talk about it something? I don't know that multiple because I know it is not possible. But why it is not possible? Because I tried that thing in one of my course, but uh, after one implement, like I gave the action, it is not uh, taking. I need to forward increment and extend matrix together. Got it. Right. Understood. I understood what you said, me. But uh, can you tell me something about how the multiple in uh, multiple um, um, inheritance will look like? Can you tell me, like how many subclasses will be there? How many superclasses will be there? You want to talk something about it? Uh, no, actually, I don't know that much. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay, if I have to say something about it, let me tell you. Have you heard about extends keyword? Yes. Sir. Okay. So when you're writing extend keyword, right, you can use it only once. You cannot use it twice. Yes. Like class Manish extends Yogesh. You cannot use class Manish extends Yogesh comma Salim. Yes. You cannot do that in Java. It is not allowed. In in uh, Java. class topic this is not allowed in okay. using classes this is not allowed if you if you remember your multiple inheritance you are having a one subclass and multiple superclass yeah one subclass is trying to inherit from its parents one father and one mother just for your understanding i'm just telling you yeah. now son cannot extends from both father and son both father and mom mo in a single line like Yeah. Class son extends father comma mother. Yeah. There is no pre provision in Java to do that. To use extends twice in a single line. Is that clear to you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now why? So now can you tell me how how come in inheritance or how come in interface it is possible? Can you talk about it something? Ah, uh, in interface support ah uh, like ah uh, father it is interface class. Then uh, we will use extends with mother and implements with the father. In such a way, we can uh, inherit that thing in a one simple class. We can use extend and implement with our keywords. We use the word extend from class to 
in okay. normal class. From and class in, to class, you mean? Uh, yes, I will use extend keyword. And for class to interface, I will use implement keyword. Okay. Uh, I'm not getting this, please. Okay, don't worry. Just assume that there is one father, one, one mother, yes. and one son. This is this is multiple, right? This yes, is multiple. Now tell me who is class and who is inheritance? Uh, for example, who is class and who is um, interface? Here? Suppose the father is the interface. Hmm. Okay. Then in son, we use implement keyword. Yeah, earlier you said extends. Uh, and if mother is a class and son is a class, we use extend keyword for that. Got it, got it, got it. So earlier you didn't use the word. Uh, you you use the other way. Okay, nothing to worry, nothing to worry. Okay, so using uh, interface and implement together, we will uh, do that. Got it. Can you tell me something more about it? Like how come using interface it is possible? What interface will be having inside it? Do you want to talk about uh, it? In interfaces, we basically have the signature method inside the body. There is nothing. We can't write that uh, in interfaces. And uh, the class which is implementing, you need to complete that code inside the uh, this class, inside the parent class. Like interfaces is just only having a uh, method which is incomplete. You mean abstract methods? Mm, abstract method, it is just different. Like interfaces is 100% incomplete. But hmm. abstract class is like uh, if any keyword we, use, uh, we are using the abstract. Then only it will become an abstract class, but interface is like just hundred percent incomplete. I got it. I got it. I got it. But what I'm asking is, your father is an interface, right? Oh uh, yeah. Interface will be having one method. Let's say that uh, yeah. is an abstract method or not? Oh uh, yes, that is abstract method. Yes. Okay, that's what I'm asking. It is an abstract method because you said right because implementation will be absent. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, abstract method is that method in which the implementation will be absent. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the same method you are going to override in your main method, which is your son. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. To override it, you have some rules. Can you talk about it? How can you override it directly? You have to do something more in this. Can you talk about it? Uh, How you are going to override it? If you remember the topic called as method overriding, try to remember a few points from this. Uh, for example, if we are use, uh, overriding the particular method, we will use the same name in the uh, child class, and uh, and that uh, by inside that we will write that and like we suppose we need to create the object. Actually, I don't properly, but yes, we will create the object and same name, name should be same, and inside that we will uh, use that write that code. I got I got your point. I got your point, but uh, the thing is, uh, you have to give more explanation to it. Okay. Uh, Answer my question. Can you use can you use static and non-static both method inside your inside your uh, inside your over the method which you're overriding, right? Yes. Sir. Can it be static and non-static both? Uh, in implement, we use normally the method. It is a static method. It is not non-static. Mostly in uh, like interfaces classes, it is always a static method. And some okay, uh, I know some where I read somewhere it is a static matter, but it's static and final matter. And in class, it will it will be a non. It will we can uh, use. Okay, don't get confused. Don't get confused. Okay. Always remember, whenever you are overriding some method, right? You have to use the exact method as it is. You yes. can't use one static and another non-static. Another static. First of all, before this, I want to tell you that you can override only non-static methods. You okay. can override static methods. This is something okay. you should know before jumping into okay. interface topic. Just, just telling you, just telling you. So you cannot use static methods here. You have to use only non-static non -static methods. Method. Only non-static methods can be overridden, not static methods. Okay. Okay. And second point that I was expecting you to tell is. Here is a relationship is important to create. Is a relationship. Have you heard about it? What is is a relationship? No. Extends. Extends ah, is. Yes, extends. Is, okay. a relationship. is a relationship. It is necessary. We're having son, right? Now this this son should. Now son will extend okay. father, right? This is what I was talking about. You okay. Huh. Relationship between the main class with the interface. classes or interface. Is this clear to is this clear? Yes, it is clear. Great, great, great. Am I asking hard questions? 
No, no. Actually, I want some hard questions only. Oh, is it? Yes. That's great. That's great. Let me let me ask you something then. Let me shall I shall I share one screen and ask you some question? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. That's great. 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 Let me. Okay. 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 Can you tell me the output of this program? Uh, it will static initialization block first, and then only that one. Uh, static initialization block, and uh, because uh, IIB is not getting because when we create the object, then IIB will start. Where the static SIB will call before uh, the main method. So the answer is static initialization block. Yes, just static initialization block. That's great. That's great. Let me ask one more question from you. Can you just tell me the output of this program? Okay. Let me reduce the size so that in a single you will be able to see that. Oh, I don't know whether it is visible to no, you. No, it is visible. Is it visible? That's great. Okay. So, can you tell me the output of this program? Take time and answer, okay? No need hurry, hurry. Take your time and answer, please. Is greater is the first answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first will be is greater. Then second is uh, a is greater. Uh, sorry, uh, a is not equal to b. The two answer will be. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Actually, I am confused. In a is greater and equal, but I think it should be not. Uh, a is greater and a is uh, not equal to b. That two answers will be. So you are telling your answer should be this and this. And this yes. Okay. So you got the answer now. Can can you uh, can you think why? Actually, why? one of this condition is getting to that by uh, in if a equals to greater or b, uh, equal, and I am confused in that only. A mm -hmm. greater. You are confused in this one. Uh, yes, I am all very confused because a is greater. Yes, uh, it is uh, perfect, but at equal. Equal I got I got what you said. See, uh, you should not use that word and. You should use the word. Can you read this? What I have written? Uh -huh. Or okay. Because of is, either of them should be true. If that is true, it will it will come into that. Is is this clear to you? Yes, sir. You should read this line as a is greater than or equal or, equals to. or a greater equals to b. Yeah. Meaning is not that both of the conditions should satisfy. Only one is enough. Is this clear to you? Yes, yes, it is clear. Okay, okay. I am damn sure that you are going to work on this now. <laughs> yes, I am going to work. Okay, okay. Let's move to some manual questions and then again I will come back to automation. Okay. Let's say you have more number of scenarios with you and uh, developer have given you the build on Thursday evening and there are almost 10,000 of not let's not be 10,000. You have almost 1,000 of test cases to execute, oh. and there is there is no automation word in your company. You you got to know what I mean. Oh. Now, 
he has done so many changes now he has done lot of changes now in his code he has done code refactor he has done a uh, lot of changes in his code now what he will do uh if uh, he releases the software on thursday evening friday evening. friday evening you have exactly one day of time you have to okay. first i will start with the positive test uh I'll check whether it uh, everything is working properly or not if the time is remaining is to me uh then i will go to the functional which is uh, more important for the uh, in like uh, a business for a perspective okay then i will check uh, the negative scenario first i will go to the positive scenario if the time is remaining then i will go uh, like uh, suppose he has a 10 models uh, and he made a changes in eight models i will first check all the eight models in positive flow and then suppose uh, in eight models there is a two model which is more important in business then i will check uh, thoroughly that the two model is working if the time is remaining okay i got what you said that is that is fine that is good that is good answer but uh, you can always conduct a impact analysis meeting have you heard about it uh yes uh, i have heard about that actually i had uh, done that also but if uh, like currently in my company i am seeing that so everyone like do you, what you think means according to you i take your decision okay so, so let's say so you have done impact analysis meeting within you you have not oh, yeah. developers and product manager yeah. whatever you think that can get impacted you are testing that first yes uh, no first i will test all the positive scenarios for example eight module is changes i will uh, test positive flow of all the eight method mm -hmm. uh, eight changes and the two changes which is impacting the business flow more then i will test that or, or suppose the one method is not that important for then i will reduce that means uh, i will not take that much uh, thoroughly but the method which is more important for the business i will test that okay okay i got what you said i got what you said see a uh, very simple thing is that you can conduct the impact analysis meeting with your developer and the product manager yeah the reason i'm telling because your developer has done a lot of changes as if you remember mm -hmm. as my question said it that your developer has done a lot of changes you can ask the developer itself what changes have you done and which all modules it is going to impact now you're not going to waste your time interesting something which is not changed at all yeah going to you are you are now you're going to test only that thing which is changed by your developer and what your developer is really suggesting you to test now yeah. you are going to test your entire positive testing which you said me which you said me yeah. that is the time because you have less time right see you yeah. at the end of the day you can do that whatever you have said it i'm just saying you how you can minimize your wastage of your time so you yeah. can ask your developer that can you just tell me which all parts i should concentrate on just because he has done the changes right he will be yeah. able to tell you more about it that please test only the logout module because i have done lot of changes in the logout module yeah. please test my payment module because i have done lot of changes in my payment module please don't test my add to cart and wish list feature because i have not done any kind of with the help of this you can you can uh, save lot of time yeah. is this you agree with yes me? i am agree with you okay okay that's great that's great that's great So you have total of three years of experience. Uh, so yes. you have two two times you have changed the company, right? Uh, yes, two times. Okay. Can you tell me the reason you changed your first company? Uh, actually, the reason I like relocation is my first company is relocating me, uh, like uh, without any notice. First, I was work with Mangalore location in corporation, and then Delhi, and then Pune, and then again they are telling me to change. So I told no. Now it needs to be stopped. Like that, that's why I think because they are directly telling me, okay, uh, in next week you need to switch uh, to the another project which is in different location. Got it. Got it. I understood. I understood. Okay, let me ask some different question then. Can you talk me something about encapsulation? Why developer will use it? Can you talk something about it? Why developer has to use encapsulation? Or why? being a automation engineer we will use encapsulation or why this encapsulation topic has come into this java picture can you talk something about uh, it okay encapsulation is just like to protecting some data from outside like accessing uh, unauthorized access 
we are using that encapsulation and developer should use because like unauthorized if we are public we are making any method as a public it can be accessed anywhere you know, from different packages anyway and like uh, recently i have worked my own framework with it with like side side uh, with one framework there i was uh, making up uh, like a locator was uh, like my x part was a uh, private and i'm following through a public method that is injection so okay and uh, i got what you said i got uh, whatever you said i got it but how can you achieve it can you talk about it how can uh, okay uh, for to achieve that uh, for example from the crucial part it uh, we will make that as a private so it is a uh, scope is limited to the particular class only and the calling method we will make that public or protected so it will we can call by another method and uh, it will prefer this local method and then it will go to the uh, it can be go to the particular and access that data i got what you said have you heard about getter and setter uh, i heard that about not use like a lot of mm-hmm. i got it i got it i got it i got what you said yeah see i'm i'm just telling it for uh, all of you who are watching this video and even to you because you should know about it because see uh, when it comes to java or automation right don't try to learn theoretical i'm just telling it to everyone okay. i'm telling very frankly when i was when i look back myself even i was reading just theoretical but that will not work out frankly speaking okay i'm i'm not saying that you don't have a knowledge i'm not saying that <laughs> saying that practical knowledge is more required now now you said me a lot of things about encapsulation but still major things you have not said it You, i know you got to know everything theoretically but not practically you okay. will you will tell me practical words when you have actually done that when you have done that see uh, I, shall i talk about it you want me to uh, yes yes i want okay see uh, the reason we use encapsulation is because there will be lot of methods in which i will be doing something and i don't want everyone to access it directly you know in uh, in our uh, a uh, single package i can call any method that i want to just by creating an object and calling it okay. but i want some methods to be protected i i don't want everyone to jump and use it i don't want everyone to go and use it in that case i will make it as private so let's say i'm writing being a developer let's say or being automation tester if i'm using anywhere let's say username and password let's take an example yeah. this credentials username and password is very very private i don't want everyone to use it i don't want everyone to know about it for that reason i will create a class in which i will define my method as private what is private now can you tell me if the method is private who all can access it can you talk about it something only in same class uh, we can uh, access that exactly the reason i am saying that that username and password method should be private because i don't want anyone else to jump and use it so that other methods can use of getter and setter now getter and setter will use the private method private. now this is what the encapsulation is all about i have one one class in which there is a private method which is my main method now. i mean which is my like user and password method which i want to protect from people okay. which i want to protect from outside world or maybe i want to protect it from the other classes is this clear to you yes sir now who is accessing it now other classes directly is not accessing it getter and setter is getter and setter is used. from where from different classes different classes calling his getter or setter now they are doing everything now getter and setter is playing with the private method with the output okay. i hope you have got 80% of the idea uh, yes i got 80% but i was i am going to try tomorrow that yeah, yeah. i can show you program also i have i have in my laptop but i want you to practice it you will get to know i know you have theoretical knowledge now i am sure you you have got 80% of the practical knowledge about it once you practice practice it you will be expert so okay, i will i will definitely practice that that's that's good that's good that's good i want to ask something if you can tell me have you heard about upcasting oh uh, yes auto upcasting and explicit downcasting okay okay i got it uh can you tell me how will you do upcasting can you tell me something that is required to do upcasting what is required to you to do upcasting and how will you do that can you tell me uh for upcasting actually we are when we converting a small data type into bigger data type with the okay 
that is called as primitive type casting i'm not asking that you're getting confused now okay let me explain that you have a topic in java which is called as type casting okay type casting okay. type casting we have two things one is primitive type casting in which you will convert the data types that is okay. or int long float double okay ha yes. from smaller data type to the bigger data type you are talking about that i am not talking about that okay i am talking about up casting and down casting which is your class type casting okay class casting there are two types one is primitive type casting in which you have a narrowing and widening okay. you are talking i'm not asking that i'm talking about class type casting in which okay. the up casting and down casting have okay. you heard yes yes i heard that i read that okay. and that i will do like a uh, i mean will be... how will you do up casting is it implicit or explicit and uh, for up casting it uh, it will in uh, like implicit it will and okay. when down casting it is yeah. okay sorry For up casting, it is a uh, explicit. For down casting, see. <laughs> okay, nothing to worry. Okay, so up casting you can do both implicit and explicit. Okay, and down casting can you tell how? Uh, down for down casting it is always explicit. Uh, always explicit, exactly. Okay. Now can you tell me how you will do? up casting can you talk something about it uh, okay for up casting i will directly create the object of a, a child class and store that data into a parent class like a a1 equals to new b and store that into a parent class that's great that's great whatever the line that you said right it is absolutely that is absolutely good now can you tell me how will you do the down casting of it okay for down casting i will create the object of parent class also child class like a a1 equals to new a V B one equals to new B, and we will create like A one equals to new B. A A uh, sorry A one equals to B one, and then uh, like B one equals to A uh, B A one. I think B one is like that. Explicitly. Explicitly. You have to mention that word explicitly. I mean, you have to use explicit there, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know whatever you said. I I am not able to understand that. Okay, much. sir. But yeah, I got it. If you say explicitly, I I wanted that term. Explicitly, you have to use it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, if I have to ask last question from automation, I will just ask a simple question. Just tell me, if you want to convert your long into integer, is it a up? Is it a narrowing or widening? If you want, you are converting long to integer. Okay, it is a. down casting means in short long okay end to long see, see you're getting confused now now we have come out of class type casting which is your up down casting now we are talking about primitive type casting okay which is your narrowing and widening okay you got got it right yes yes i got it you're converting from long to integer can you tell me what is this it is a down casting it's a down explicit down casting again you are going to the class type casting i'm not talking about class i'm talking about primitive okay. primitive is something that deals with the data types so what are byte short int long float double what are these are these data types uh, yes it is a data type so you are converting your long to integer now this is called as primitive type casting and you are coming from a wider data type to a smaller data type smaller data called as narrowing Okay, it is narrowing. You got it? Yes, actually. Going from a smaller to smaller bigger, to... and it's called as widening. Widening. Is that clear to you? Yes. Sir. Actually, I'm using different words for that, like it is up casting and down casting in data type. I got what you said, but that's not a right word. Okay. <laughs> right word is narrowing and widening. Right. Use up casting and down casting that deals with the class. Now we are not dealing with the class; we are dealing with the data. You got the difference? Yes, yes, I got it. I think I confused you a lot today. <laughs> But believe me, your questions are going to be like this. Okay, okay, okay. Can you give me one example of index out of bound exception? Can you give me one random example? Out of bound. Okay, it is an array. Like suppose if we are using. Uh, array of four, and I am using like four, uh, like a of four. 
then it will be out of out of uh, index exception because we uh, in array it is start from zero to three, and we are using four as it is a four, so it will give the uh, array out of one. Got it. Out of one. I understood. I understood. I have one more question from what mentioned. Shall I ask it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Have you heard about protected package, public, private? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's say one method is there in one of the class, which is your protected one. Protected one you have in one of the class. Yes. And uh, how will you call it in the different class? Can you talk something about it? Actually, uh, in different class, we can use. Uh, the super keyword from different class, but we need to extend that class also. That way we can call it. I got what you said. Okay, I got what you said. So you, your both the class has to be in different package. What what you are telling? I'm just telling that. So both the classes has to be in different package, and now you can you call it using extends that is correct by by creating the by creating the subclass of it, and then by creating an object you can call it. Yes. And by using super keyword, it's uh, like to call the class. So, ah, yes. Just by creating the just by creating the subclass and inheriting that class which is protected one, you can call it. Yes, we can. This is what I was trying to tell you. That how will you call it the protected one by creating the subclass in the different class and uh, by inheriting the properties of protected, protected. class, you can call it. You you getting something? Yes, yes, I'm getting a lot of things. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. <sighs> Let me ask something easy. Can you tell me what are the drawbacks of exploratory testing? Uh, actually, when we do exploratory testing, it is like we are exploring the new function like computers which we don't have. And it is more type consuming, and uh, instead of more time consuming, it is a directional test. Yeah. Okay. We are going to some direction, and uh, like, and we are not fixed. Like suppose uh, we are performing A uh, and B, C, D. There is a lot of method. We will test A method and directly go to C. As B method, we don't know. That is the job. That like we most of the things we don't know. We explore it. Got it. Understand. You want to talk more about it? You can go ahead. No, actually, uh, that is the thing because a lot of things we like uh, whenever we get the new method, first we need to understand what is it. And if we are doing exploratory, it is like try it and try it and try. if it is uh, okay, then okay, this is the output we are getting. If it is not, so it is lot of time consuming. Got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. In Selenium, have you heard about a method called as is enabled? Have you heard about it? Ah uh, yes, it is in test time. It is enabled. Can you talk more about it? What is the meaning of is enabled method? How can you use it? Where you can use it? Can you talk something about it? Is enabled. What it will return? What is the use of it? Is enabled method in Selenium? Ah, uh, actually, for support, ah, uh, some check boxes. If it is. Uh, enable after the uh, first after we are clicking on the some button and the below data is uh, enabled like uh, otherwise it will be disabled for some field it is uh, disabled and it will enable. if it is enabled it will be uh, return the true value if it is not enabled it will return the false value got it understood so it will return the boolean boolean is boolean. It? it will return the boolean is what you mean yes Okay. Okay. What do you mean by enable or disable? What do you mean by that in normal English language? What is the meaning of what is the meaning of checkbox is enable or disable? What is the meaning of it? If it is a clickable, means I actually got it, got it, got it. If it's a clickable, it is enable. If it's not clickable, it is disable, right? Exactly. Got it, got it. Understood, understood. That's great. That's great. Can you explain me STLC once? Software test lifecycle. Actually, uh, I have not uh, that much about uh, in software testing because I am in agile method. 
and what we are doing uh, like first we will get uh, the requirement once the complete estimate like uh, this method is going to change or this uh, uh, the, uh, this functionality is get added or so we get the estimate and according to the estimate we started with the read like uh, this is the read uh, this uh, method is changing or this is uh, changing this functionality is get added uh, okay according uh, according to that we will start designing a test case or uh, designing a scenario okay once the scenario is completed uh, so then we will uh, go deeper like what thing is involved what is involved and accordingly we set the parameters like what is the necessary thing and uh, we will provide that uh, okay this uh, this uh, testing it will calculate around 5 days or 6 days and uh, after that we will set a uh, start with a parameter setting like a base set means what is the uh, basic requirement of that as uh, the environment setting is already present uh, so what uh, like uh, uh, suppose it will require this parameter it will require this uh, basic things uh, so we will prepare that and once that we are uh, done we will start executing that uh, and once the execution was completed we will go for the test cases and that uh, once the execution like every from a screen or from the screen we are having what we are getting uh we are getting anything unexpected suppose if we are getting unexpected we will uh, raise that issue uh, as a uh, no i have expected this uh, and i am getting this data if suppose i am getting the different data uh, then i will talk to the developer if developer is going to okay no this is has to be like this way and i am not agree with that developer i will ask my senior Uh, other, uh, otherwise, I will uh, like most of the time I will directly uh, raise the data and ask what okay. So just give me a mail as I am working in a Azure bank. It is very crucial data, very crucial data. So we ask always uh, go for the mail. Like uh, okay, I am expecting this, uh, and this is uh, and it is a completely mail. Like, okay, and once the testing was completed, we are uh, completed. Okay. Uh, then we will uh, create the test cases and test exit report then test uh, pass report in test pass report we will mention that okay this is the functionality is the uh, okay this is the base functionality uh, this is the old functionality in the old way it is happening this is the new functionality means uh, in the new way it is happening then we will provide the test cases okay we uh, provide uh, completed with this much of test cases and then uh, if there is any remark or any observation we found Then we will write that uh, okay, I found this much observation. There is a my remark. Okay, in remarks we can also know uh, this. Uh, this need to be added. And if there is approval from the particular authority, we will put that. The comments we will put that. And uh, after that, uh, okay, environment uh, where we are tested. Uh, it is a physical or virtual or UAT free or okay. Uh, we will put that. And oh yeah. And suppose if there is a uh, like uh, any scenario we are want to add, then we will also uh, provide that comment. Uh, this is missing from this side. We uh, add this. In this way, we will uh, uh, generate the test report and execution report, and we will send to the higher authority. Once they are validated, if they are okay with that, uh, then they are okay. Then it will be passed. If they are not uh, okay with that, uh, they will tell us. Uh, no, you need to be checked this also. then we will also check that if on uh, it is completed uh, okay and we will that and accordingly they will take this i got it i got it yeah that's good that's good that's good that's great that's great uh i was ha- i'm happy that uh, you spoke what they do in your company rather than talking about what exactly the still sees that is also fine you you told what you follow that's fine that's fine that's fine nothing to worry okay So that's all from this interview. So, frankly speaking, uh, I liked you. You you are good. Uh, you have a no good knowledge. Frankly speaking, believe me. Till now, this many this many automation questions I have not asked to anyone. I have asked a few people on the channel, but not these many. Just because you were excited, you were making me excited to ask you more automation questions. That's the reason I asked you today. And uh, I have no doubt that you will not get your job soon. I am hundred and one percent sure about it. You are going to get your job very soon because I can see the passion in you, the knowledge in you, and uh, excitement in you. And uh, you have a knowledge. Frankly speaking, you have a knowledge. Frankly speaking, 
other automation testers who are applying for automation job, 90% of the people don't know what is encapsulation, what is upcasting, what is downcasting, what is getter, what is setter. They don't know what is protected. They don't know what is private. They don't know what is narrowing. They don't know what is widening. I think I spoke a lot from different, different topics. We discussed a lot of things today. And um, I know you, you were not having 100% knowledge about each and every topic, but I was happy that you at least have heard about those topics and you gave a try. You spoke theoretically, but that was true. That was good theoretical knowledge about encapsulation that you gave. So, and regarding auto, uh, regarding manual testing, obviously you're fine. So overall you're good. Um, I'm sure that uh, you will get a job. If I have to give some feedback, I will just tell that practice on the automation questions. Do not read anything theoretical. So theoretical, right? That was over when we... Hello. I think you are not And if you just practice those automations, whatever, whatever the topics that we have discussed, right? If you really practice it, practically, if you work on it, you will be able to answer it more clearly in the interview. Like if you really work on the protected private that I, we discussed, if you really work on the encapsulation that we discussed, if you really work on practically on the collections part, instead of just reading it, uh, reading about it and going to the interview, that will really work wonders for you. So for me, you are great, frankly speaking, and I'm giving you a guarantee that people are going to love you. Like all you have answered it. I'm telling you one thing, 99% of the people, they don't have guts to come in front of me. You had that, you came here, you told me to take your interview. It's night. I want people to see this. It's night. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is 23.35 PM in India now. Now it's really late for all of us. This is Friday, tomorrow is weekend. So this is how we are spending our weekend. Okay, so I wish you get your job very soon. Whatever the feedback I have given, uh, if in, in case you want, you can work on those and I'm sure I'm sure that will ring, really bring wonders to you. In case you have something to say, please go ahead. No, no. Actually, currently, like I am getting a more job in manual, but I this is the time when I need to switch to automation for a better future. So I am trying for an automation in this. That's right? good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And uh, you have really worked. Yes. You really worked on it. Really, I can see that. But you you have to work a little more practically. But frankly speaking, with this knowledge also, you will get a job, but don't settle here. Please gain more knowledge and then apply for a job and get it. I'm sure you will get it. And whenever you're getting a job, please comment out in this video, which is going to be on YouTube, so that people will see you. I'm sure you will. I don't have any doubt about it. You have something to say? Something more? No. Okay. What are you going to do now after this session? After this, I'm having a lunch. Dinner? Yes, dinner, sir. Okay, okay, okay. And tomorrow I'm back, uh, going to learn more about this in Java. That's okay. good. Right. That's good. So you will sleep wisely, right? You are not going to think more about it. <laughs> no. Actually, today I will completely dream about these things only. I feel so, yeah. I feel so. Nothing to worry. I am 101% sure this interview is going to do wonders for your life. Believe me, I'm just telling it to you. Uh, you are going to be a better person tomorrow. Better person in terms of knowledge that you're having tomorrow, today and tomorrow. Don't listen to me, whatever I'm saying, you will see practically within you. I'm sure about it. So, <laughs> okay. Sure, uh, that's all from this interview. Uh, I wish you good health and a good future. Please take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye, take care.